Hey, I'm Sam and I do design and in the video today, I'm showing you how to make a custom Procreate brush and how to render wood. Oh, is YouTube gonna demonetize me if I use the word Procreate and wood in the same sentence? <laughs> Okay, so if you've seen my Instagram page, I posted today that I did this sketch, uh, started on the Eames lounge chair, and then I thought, actually, I've been making this wooden texture brush, so maybe it's time to show you guys how to make your own custom brushes as well. Uh, and then let me know, maybe if you want this brush or if you wanna make your own brushes, I can leave the link to it to download in the comments below. So. Uh, let's jump straight into it. We have the basis of this already, uh, but I have the time lapse that I can play from start to finish for you now, so we're all up to speed. Go! brush like this you get all of these settings which what I'm going to do is leave Procreate's official instructions down in the comments below they probably do a better job at me about explaining things uh, so if you want to flick through that then that's great but I thought I'd show you guys just as I'm doing this wooden render itself as well so I'm going to show you the sort of settings that I've got in here as well You've got everything to do with the pencil, the way that that's laid out. You've got things like the shape, the grain, the dynamics. Then you've got stuff uh, like the, the pressure of the pencil and the tilt. Uh, and then down to the brush properties itself and the source. I think personally for this wooden texture, this source image, uh, the, the shape source and the grain source is the most important bit to get the wooden texture. What you're seeing here is that the brush texture has got this sort of grainy lines going through it. And it's these lines that we want to make the most of for our wooden texture, because then we're literally, if you're on the right layer, let's pick the right layer and, and a decent color. Maybe that. Okay, so you can start to see now how you can build up the layers using this brush itself and you can use the shape of the brush to use those lines itself so you haven't got to individually draw all of these tiny little lines you're letting the brush do that itself right so that's going to save you so much time so then by the time you come to actually do the wood on the real thing like this you can just sort of follow along and if you look on the real Eames chair, it's separated out into different panels. So for example, uh, let's see, this panel is here, this panel is here, this panel is here. Uh, but I'm not gonna worry about that for too much for this tutorial. Let's just uh, focus on the, the texture itself. So if you start to change the source from the actual pen itself, then you can start to get different effects. And I chose, you know, Procreate has this wood texture here, but it's really not what we're going for. We want to make the grain up individually instead of pasting on this wooden texture, right? So for that, I found a brush that had this sort of grain going through it. Uh, okay, so it's flat brush. I think that has a good definition of lines going this way um, personally. So I use that one and then as the grain source, uh, I used... I think it was sketch paper and I wanted it to have some sort of, you know, some grain going on, but not some crazy pattern where you could really um, distort the, the shape as well. Because what the grain does is, is, it's like that's what the surface that you're sketching on, right? So you want these small little things happening here, but you don't want it to be too crazy that takes away from the actual grains that you're putting in, right? So with that, being done and then so once you have the source set up and you can start to uh, see the lines coming through like this that's when you start to go and change 
the things like the pressure of the pencil because you don't want it to be nothing right you don't want it to be low pressure like that but if you go too much then you're just going to get an absolute blob of ink going down on the page so you want to find a nice balance with that uh, I'm going to put these all on the screen so you guys can see the types of things that I've been doing but I'm also the main point of this video is to show you how to render the wood once you've got the brush set up and um, then you can start to actually put it into a sketch like this. If you want to find out how to make your own brushes from scratch then I'd recommend going and reading the Procreate official instructions down below um, but I think that's enough about the technical side of the brushes because honestly I don't know. <laughs> I'm just playing around with this brush to get the nice grain that I think feels like wood. Um, so yeah, let's just hop straight into it now and start sketching on this Eames chair. So the first thing that I'm going to do is actually um, really roughly pick what sort of color I want to use. And I think it's gonna be this darkish color here. This is almost red, this, this color for the, for the darker section. And you can see already just by putting it in and I'm sort of following it around the shape of where I know the curve is. So the curve of the chair, it sort of wraps around, right? And then here it comes down and then wraps around like this. So with this technique, you can actually wrap the grain around the exact shape that you want instead of trying to paste on the Procreate standard um, brush like we saw earlier on right so let's do this for real now we're going to make a new layer and because i've already got all of the orange of the base layer of the color of the wood here i can come in here tap on the layer click clipping mask and that means that anything that i put on this layer will now only show up based on what's underneath it okay so for example this this is exactly what's going to happen it's only going to show up wherever is underneath it and the main thing that I can do with this afterwards is I can turn that off and you've still got all that information that you've just put in there so you're not losing information by doing this you're just hiding it which is really helpful when you start to come in and change bits of your layer later on so I'm going to come in and uh, by the time that I've made this video I think I've already sketched this wood like three or four times just in in saying what I've been saying so far so I'm just gonna follow it round like this and with this type you see how it, it looks already I went over a little bit too much here and that means that it's not following the grain anymore um, but over here oh, I want to follow maybe it's best actually to do this on a new layer because it's getting too close to what we've already got in this section here so I'm gonna go new layer tap that clipping mask again and again it's all based on what is the reference layer underneath here so Okay, I'm just going to put it in like this. And then basically, guys, the <laughs> adding in a texture like this already shows that it's wood and you know that you're reading it as if it's wood. Uh, and I think that's really helpful. I don't quite like how this is working up here. So we're going to go and just delete some of this up here. I think it needs to follow it a little bit more. Okay, this is getting somewhere that I'm happy with now. Then what we can do is we go and make slightly darker, just a little bit, just to give it wood's not just two colors, right? We've got so many colors going on. So I'm just gonna start adding in some extra details and this is really gonna make the texture pop. When we've got three or four colors going and then they're all gonna overlap, that gives you even more colors. So. Okay. 
that was on the wrong layer, go up here. Okay, I think I'm getting pretty happy with this already. This is a little bit strange down here, but that's fine because um, we're gonna pretty much cover all of that up anyway. So what I'm gonna do next is make a new layer completely. And actually, I will make it a clipping mask this time. I'm gonna use pure white. And instead of using this wood grain, I'm gonna go down to something like airbrush, soft airbrush. And now we're gonna paint on the highlights and shadows, right? Uh, and we're going to do this in the exact same way that we do for every other sketch. Use a bigger brush than you think you're going to need as a rule of thumb. And already you see how much difference that makes. It's going to add the sheen on top of the wooden texture that we've just made. We didn't try and bake this shine in to the texture. We're gonna do the base layer, then the texture, then the shine and the shadows on top of that and build it up. And it's all gonna naturally progress on top of each other. Um, so you haven't got to bake that into the sketch. This is one of my favorite um, benefits of digital sketching because if you did this um, on paper, once you put this texture down and then you start coloring in, the highlight on top, you can't ever go back and change the texture. Uh, or you can, but it starts getting a bit crazy. This, you can just turn it off and on. If I don't like it, I'm gonna change it. Now I'm gonna add a new layer. Maybe not completely black, let's add in some, some color in there as well. Uh, same soft brush. And uh, we're gonna add in the shadows now as well. Oh, I didn't make that into a clipping mask. There we go. And what I might do with this layer is, you see over here where it says the N, that means it's normal. You can change the multiply modes, uh, sorry, you can change the blend modes to different things. Uh, and I think multiply works best for shadows like this. So that's gonna keep some of the data in there when you start adding in black. You never wanna use full black in a sketch either. Uh, when you're rendering out, never ever use real black. You wanna start adding in some different colors um, shadows are normally warmer, whereas highlights are normally cooler. No, I've got that the wrong way around. Uh, but yeah, you want to start adding in the uh, color to the actual shading that you're doing as well. So again, you want to use a slightly bigger brush than what you expect. That's going to give it a nice natural uh, fall off. And what you can do that's gonna start muddying the, the highlights that you've put in as well. So I would recommend doing the shadows and then the highlights on top of that as well. Then you can come in. This armchair bit's probably gonna cast a shadow, so I'm gonna just put this in. And uh, already, this is just after like a few brush strokes. Look at the texture that we've made, right? Uh, this is, I would say, pretty much done for, for the, the thing that we're trying to do. I'm gonna render out the leather uh, and then let's reconvene at the end and see how quick uh, we can render the wood and the leather all together. Um, so yeah, let's just probably jump into um, a time-lapse now uh, and see how we go.
So there it is guys, that is how to do your own custom brushes in Procreate and render wood on this Eames lounge chair. If you learned anything in this video, let me know down in the comments below and let me know what types of tutorials you want in the future as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment and hit the bell button and everything else that YouTube asks you to do. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.